Welcome to the Daily Jaffa. Hammers linked to Bassi. It's been reported that the West Ham manager John Locke is chasing ex-player Bassi to form an exciting four-man strike force to rival Real Madrid and Barcelona. The fee is in a region of £32 million, which is putting Locke off at this time. Reports from Southampton would indicate the Saints are looking to Benzir to partner Bassi. The Season 6 West Ham United B team has been updated, completed and ready to rock and roll. It is now time to select the first youth player we review for West Ham. Remember to post in the comments below. Unfortunately, time is running out on a daily Jaffa. I haven't got the time to read. Adrian speaks out. Feel free to pause it, have a little read and see who we're linked to in Italy. Yes, we are going back to Italy for yet another player. Hello, welcome, Devil Sniper here, episode 2, season number 6, as you can see, top left corner, our total spending is £42 million, yes, we are seriously sticking a stake in the ground, setting ourselves some high targets to try and take the quad, yes, to at least try and challenge yet again for the Premier League title, to challenge for the FA Cup, to challenge for the Champions League, and if possibly the Capital One Cup as well. And we're going to start off at home against Swansea. Now, Swansea is a team that we haven't had the greatest results against. As you see, they've got a, they've got a couple of ex-players. Uh, Dorian Jean is an ex-player of ours. He was fantastic. Always causes us problems. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, to do ourselves some justice and pick up three much-needed points. And it's great to see Lamella, Destro and Gabbiadini all making their debut at home in front of the home fans, which will be absolutely fantastic. As Swansea take the kickoff, Lucas knocking the ball into Key. Key stroking the ball into Dorian Jean, the ex-player from West Ham United. Tea ladies do miss Dorian Jean very, very much. As you know, tea ladies are called Dorian and Jean. And they make fantastic cakes. As Filippo is playing right back, such as his professionalism. He drops deep, he covers, great stamina. I've got to say, he must be favourite for Ballon d'Or this year. He's had a great start to the season, a few games in, but he's already scored some important goals for West Ham United. And he's always at the at the central and focal point of everything good about West Ham United. Ola John has the ball on the right-hand side, trying to create something, trying to go past Taylor, the defender. Feeds the ball into Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker just on the edge of being offside. Swings the ball in, and Lamella with a header just past the post. Lamella not known for his gifts in the air, more of his gifts of his feet on the ground. But he was up straight away trying to get that header. Fantastic play as Eduardo picks the ball up. He's found his scoring bits at the end of last season. The ball's into Destro. Destro into Filippo. Bon Appetit! And it's 1-0 after 11 minutes. The champions take Swansea by storm. Corner is swung in. Kolka goes up. It's great defending there. The ball comes out to Gabi Adini. Gabi Adini using his strength and size to keep the ball. Knocks it into Kolka. Kolka shapes the shoot. Goes for the shot. It falls to Destro. And that is a great save by the Swansea goalkeeper. The champions are playing like champions at this moment in time. Really looking sensational. Lamella, Destro and Gabbiadini are really causing Swansea a great deal of problems at the back. Especially Lamella. He's very talented, very skillful. As the ball comes to Destro. Destro into Shaw. Shaw into Bonaparte. Bonaparte, Gabbiadini, one touch, goal! Oh my days, 34 minutes gone and Gabbiadini has scored on his debut. What a fantastic goal. The boy has so much calmness about him. He just literally took one touch on his right foot and just gently guided the ball into the bottom corner with his left foot. Fantastic play, but Swansea never out. Nathan Dyer, great turn inside. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Great save by Ballon, but the follow-up's gone in. No, it looks like the linesman's got his flag up. It appears when the shot was taken by Dyer, Daniels was offside. England international, young Daniels. Very good player for England. Perhaps you'll get a good chance with the upcoming World Cup. If England can qualify, Scabiadini picks the ball up, plays the ball over the top, looking for Destro, and Destro is just out-muscled. Something he's going to have to adapt to in the Premier League is big, physical, solid centre-backs who th won't think twice about going through the back of you. But we're going at half-time. West Ham United 2, Swansea 0, Filippo Bonaparte in the 11th minute, and Gabbiadini in the 34th minute to set off his West Ham career with... An absolute buzz as Filippo Bonaparte picks up the ball yet again in the centre of the park, causing Swansea no end of problems. He really has been man the match for me. Cutting inside, teasing them, pulls the trigger, and unfortunately that is just wide on the post. He has been sensational today, absolutely sensational. As Lucas has the ball for Swansea, but he is totally and utterly battered by Shaw. The ball comes back, he's chipped in. What's going on? Oh my days, Richard just put it past the post. Some real sloppy defending there. I think Eduardo got in the way. He blocked it. It came straight back to Richards. Richards went for the shot. Butler looked like he had that one and truly covered. As you know, Butler has uh, 
has been playing quite well as Daniels is completely through. Butland comes out. He's been chipped. That's a great goal. But Butland's managed to pull it off the line and Dorian Jean has slotted it in. How unfortunate that is. A little bit sloppy defending there by Kyle Walker and Stephen Colker. As Butland managed to pull that ball off the line. That was fantastic goalkeeping. I did not think he had that amount of pace to get back that quickly. He came, down, he came down out and closed Daniels out so well. Got back, managed to do it, but unfortunately between Colker and, and Kyle Walker, they just did not, did not clear the ball, unfortunately, which is a great shame. But Filippo with the shot, it's just been sent wide. Luke Shaw knocks the ball in. Gabbiadini goes up. Oh, he's restored the two-goal lead in the 79th minute. Gabbiadini with his second goal on his debut appearance for West Ham United, proving lot correct to spend 20 million on a young centre forward. A great header. He got he rose head and shoulders above the centre back and nonchalantly headed the ball into the goal into the goal. Fantastic start to his West Ham career. But it looks like Swansea are on the attack again. Butland comes out and takes the ball with great ease. He throws it out to Adrian. Adrian, who's been brought on for Filippo, he tries to spread the play, but the referee blows the full-time whistle, and the score finishes. West Ham United 3, Swansea City 1, and Gabbiadini strikes 2 on his debut. With great performances from Destro, and it has to be said, Lamella was standout as well. And Filippo nonchalantly knocked in the first goal for West Ham United, but a great performance. So here we go. We're going to take a look at Jack Wilshere. I really want to bring in a midfield player, that is world class. I want someone who can play centre back, um, <clears throat> not centre back, CDM and Cam, if need be. I'm not too worried about Cam because we do have the advantage of Lamella being able to play Cam. But Jack Wilshere is a player that I really, really do like. I mean, he has he has everything that you you could utterly want in a in a midfield player. And Suarez wants to leave Liverpool. We'll have to see how that one turns out. But I'm definitely not going to be uh, approaching the 30 year old. He's too old for uh, for our team at this moment in time. So Massey is being tracked by Valencia. And Udinese come back. And they're going to offer us 13 million. Not 13.5, but 13 million for Fabio Figueroa, the young Brazilian centre-back. And I've got to say, I've had a chat with a lad. And he's, he has been outspoken. He's, 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 he's moaned about not getting enough first-team football. He's moaned that he's, he's not getting a fair crack of the whip. And uh, to, to a degree, I agree with him. But he's got to remember, we do have such fantastic players at the club. And he's willing to work with me. So on that basis, I'm going to reject the offer from Udinese and keep him at the club. And as you can see, Bayern Munich have come back and said £29.5 million to secure the signature of Jack Wilshere. Now the only problem I have with that price tag is Wilshere is known for being injury prone. He's picked up quite a few injuries since he's been at Bayern Munich. He's missed a huge chunk of the season for Munich. And I'm a little bit concerned that £29.5 million is a lot of money for a player that I consider to be a risk. A huge risk. You know, he has got everything. I mean, I look at him, I've watched videos of him. I've been to watch him. And I will say, he's probably one of the best midfield players I've seen. But it's that fact that he picks up injuries so easily that really concerns me. And on that basis, I don't think we can stretch to £29.5 million. Even if we did a player swap, which I don't believe I would want to do, I think it's just too much money, which is a great shame. But we do have another player that we can look at. A player who is who was linked with us in Season 1, linked with us in Season 2, linked with us in Season 3, and it's Paul Pogba. You know, he's now grown. He's, he's had a lot of growth. He's, he looks the complete article to me. He may not be as good as Jack Wilshere, but he's pretty damn impressive. He's got good short passes. He's got a good all-round game. And with 11 months left on his contract, I'm willing to match his valuation, which is currently set at £13 million. Bassey. Bassey is a player I do want to bring back to the club. As you may have read in the newspaper, in the Daily Jaffa, Southampton are interested in Benzir. Now, I'm going to read between the lines on when they say they're interested in Benzir. I think they're interested in the swap deal, and as much as it pains me, and as much as this could upset West Ham fans, I'm going to use Yassin Benzir in a swap deal for Bassi. I didn't really want to sell Bassi when we did, nearly three years ago, three seasons ago. I didn't want to sell Bassi, but we were forced into a corner. We needed additional money, and he was a, it was a good, a good move for player and club at the time. But he's a player I've always wanted to have back. He's got good growth. 
He's a little fighter. He scored quite a few goals last season. He's already started this season on fire. He's got four goals for Southampton in three games. He is a quality, quality player, and I really feel he could add to the team. And bearing in mind, our front force at this moment in time is pretty much Italian. I feel that bringing him in, it will just be superb. And uh, it'll be nice to let, get him to interlink with the club again. As you can see, they do come back and say they want £3.5 million, which to me is a good deal. At this moment in time, it's a good deal, considering how much they wanted for him, cash alone. As you can see, Bayern Munich are willing to let Pogba go for £14 million. So they're, perhaps they're not going to give him a new contract, but if, he accepts our, if they accept our offer of £14 million, I'll be more than happy to give him a contract. <laughs> £80,000 a week would be absolutely sublime. That would be fine. Again, Southampton have come back and they're asking for the same amount of money. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with Southampton. They obviously they obviously couldn't have got my last email with the actual confirmation that I will give them £3.5 million plus Ben's ear. That's really quite bizarre. So uh, hopefully this time it will go through and we won't get any little popbacks from the, the email server. But as you can see, Bayern Munich have accepted £14 million. Now, if we can get the contract right, I feel that this is a fantastic player to bring in. He, you know, he's nearing his prime. When he hits 25-26, he's going to be an absolutely phenomenal CDM. And uh, he's going to have a good year to get to, you know, to get to know the club before he hits his prime. So I'm really chuffed at bringing in Pogba. If he accepts the contract, you never know. He might turn around and say no, which would be really, really guttering. And uh, no, he hasn't. It looks like he's accepted his contract. And the transfer offer has now been accepted by Southampton. So we just got off the contract. Now, I've got to get this right. 50 grand is going to be crucial. He's coming from a crucial contract. He's going to have to come in on a crucial contract. But if we can get him on a four-year deal at 50 grand a week, I feel that is a fantastic piece of business. Pogba's happy with three years and 80 grand. Well, here we go. We're just about to confirm. There's the signature. And we have now spent 56 million pounds. Congratulations to Barcelona. They're crowned Copper Europe champions. £56 million. I've said that we were going to clearly stick a stake in the ground and set ourselves some severe goals. We're now backing that up by bringing in some absolute world-class talent. Lamella, Destro, Gabbiadini, Pogba. Four absolute epic players. Just think back to yourself. Season 1, Season 2, Season 3. We couldn't dare dream of bringing in such quality, such class to the club. But now it's been it's happening a lot of it's due to the sale of John Gudetti, as we know. We sold him for £33.5 million. But on top of that, it's to do with McVitie's and their faith in the club. When our club nearly collapsed due to the sale of uh, Lukaku and uh, DS and DG stole the money, you know, it's constant that they are just fantastic board. It really, really is fantastic. And I'm so chuffed for they've backed us so, so much. But none of that. Let's get into the game. As you can see, Rodriguez on the left-hand side for Southampton. Moving forward. Great ball in. And Cork has shocked the champions in the 13th minute by giving Southampton a 1-0 lead. It's going to be quite an ironic game because Bassi and Benzia are rumoured to be doing a swap deal between the clubs. And Bassi is playing for West Ham as he picks up the ball on the right-hand side. Looking to play the ball through. Chips the ball over the top. Great save by Butland. Coughlin seems to get mixed up. And Southampton have made it 2-0 after 19 minutes. Unbelievable confusion between Butland and Kolka there. A great ball by Bassi, but unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable defending. As Gabbiadini turns to defend the pulse to trigger. Great save. Odejan tries to get the header back, but it looks like he was offside, unfortunately. Great play again by Gabbiadini. He does seem so mobile. But that is an absolutely world-class save from the Southampton goalkeeper. Absolutely unbelievable. I still think the West Ham manager is not looking very happy. At the goal that they conceded between Butlin and Colker. He's not looking happy on that touchline whatsoever. But we have the ball with Gabbiadini. Spreading the play out to Lamella on the right-hand side. Swings the ball in. Great defensive header. It comes to Olajon. Olajon with a shot. It looked like he went for the cross. Trying to be unselfish. But it didn't work out. So I've had to bring the ball out of defence. Moving forward. Trying to find the ball for Bassi. But the referee blows the half-time whistle. Southampton 2. West Ham United 0. And the question is. Can we come back? Can we gain? the three points.